Hello everyone and welcome to the final segment of the Joiner Plane series. Obviously this isn't a live stream. I'm going to film this in advance, do a little editing, post it up, and you'll be able to watch it for your viewing enjoyment at your leisure. So the first thing I want to talk about is the original that I think you saw in at least one of the videos and is the basis, the master for this copy. So I'm going to switch camera angles around a little bit, we'll continue with the video, and we'll get into the, some of the finer details of the, the master and the copy, some of the differences, some of the improvements, and then sum, summarize everything with my overall thoughts, and then we'll wrap it up. So here's the original. This plane was made by the Mathison Company and they're out of Edinburgh, Scotland. And as near as I can tell, the stamp on this indicates that the plane was manufactured in either 1849 or 1850. So that makes this plane no less than 172 years old and what you can see except for the chip on the handle that it's in really good condition the ends have no checking and the bottom really has no wear and there are no major defects there's no dents no cracks nothing and I believe the blade is original so let's look at their, their configuration for the bed. The first thing that you'll see is there's a channel cut for the, um, the screw that binds together the, um, the chip breaker and the blade. So this is the part that fits in that slot. And then that has a backing nut and then there's a channel cut in the wedge to receive the backing nut and it's a channel because this is all going to slide based on where the wedge fits in the um, wedge pocket and the wear as the blade gets shorter uh, it needs to travel through this pocket and then what you'll also notice is um, that relative to the to where this wedge is positioned in the um, in the plane I can show that to you You can see that this is all this is all much higher up on the wedge inside the body of the plane. And so let's see if we could see this. The tips of the wedge, they end about at least an inch or an inch and a quarter from the end of the blade. So the last inch and a quarter of the blade and the chip breaker are not supported by any part of the wedge or the abutments. And uh, one of the reasons for that is because you have this, this exaggerated uh, high spot in the wedge. I mean, not in the wedge, but in the uh, chip breaker, which creates this space that you can see in here and that puts the pressure right on the tip of the chip breaker and confines it to the top of the blade so that there isn't binding when it when the curl comes off the tip of the blade it doesn't bind in the space in here and that's what provides the curl but my opinion is that all this is unnecessary and you benefit much better from a thicker blade and from the tips of the wedge which extend right down to the to the end of the blade and that's your stability so thicker blade longer wedge and do away with the chip breaker and you've seen me mention that before because that's my whole theory about why why you don't need hock blades why you don't need any aftermarket blades especially in wood body planes and uh, then you could free yourself up, make your own blades, and go on from there. And they perform perfectly. 
So the other thing that I wanted to bring to your attention, let's see if I drop this blade down right to the body of the plant to the bottom of the plane. And what you can see is that you have a you have a, a pretty small mouth between the cutting the cutting edge of the blade and the the throat of the plane but you'll see how big mine is it's about maybe half that size and that's going to contribute to uh, the smoothness of the cut that you're able to get with the plane so now that we know everything about this plane let's take a look at the copy so the numbers came off the copy very well I'll just hold these up so that you could look into the mouth and everything and see how these look they're real nice but what you'll notice is you'll notice that this ramp extends down much lower on the blade on the bl on the blade and the tips of the wedge extend all the way to the cutting f the cutting edge of the blade and i can also point out to you again how tightly the the wedge fits against the abutments this is super tight ridiculously tight I'll show you the other one. That's really, really good. I'm really happy with that. So, here's the mouth. It's very, very close. So, you'll get a good curl when you're operating the plane. But hopefully, there won't be any binding. I sanded the throat to uh, 220. So this right in here is real smooth, so hopefully there's a, a bit of reduced friction in there. So the curl will just come right out, and you won't have any problems as you're working on, the, working on your projects with this, because this is going to be a user. So and then I'll also show you the, the tote. Tote came out real nice, sanded generally to 120, and I hit some edges I mean 150 and hit some edges with 220 so then I'll give you a good look at the at the wedge came out real nice all smooth through here nice and flat on the back trimmed up real nice it's real good this is the blade you saw me make this in a bunch of videos came out real nice takes a great edge I honed it to uh, 1200 on the Japanese water stones so you can see in here without anything in the way this is a simple bed there's no channel cut in here because we did away with that there's no channel cut in here did away with that so right there is a big time time saver and uh, also what happens is you're going to benefit from the accuracy the, the there's, there's a higher degree my opinion there's a higher degree of precision in planes that don't have the chip breakers and the shortened wedges and all this other mumbo jumbo it's a simpler plane and you're getting more precision out of it so here's the body of the plane without the other stuff in the way I got a, a half inch radius back here, three, three sixteenths radius down to about an inch and a half from the bottom. Those are all stopped. And then this is all sanded through here by hand to uh, 150. And I got a little bit of checking back here, which I may have discussed previously, but I'll go over it again. This blank was taken from a tree in November of 2018. And at the time, I took one extra log than I thought I needed when I was fabricating the grandmother's chairs. And this log was never milled. And it sat 
and even though it was sealed really well I got some checking so that's why my advice to anybody that takes their own uh, blanks from lumber is to mill it up real quick got to sand you got to seal everything real good and you got to mill it you can't let those logs sit or they'll check anyway and that's what happened here and I chose to use this because I don't have the luxury this is a 26 inch plane so I don't have the luxury of going through and uh, tossing this to the side because there's a little checking it's stable um, this was milled f almost four years ago so um, I'm not too worried about it it's not going to change the way the uh, the plane performs in any way and if it gets worse I'll deal with it at the time so uh, that's my method of madness with all that so um, the other thing that I wanted to say about my video of keeping these things the blanks square and flat and straight is that when you get to the point where you finish your plane you can hand sand all this so if you had saw marks or planer marks in this from equipment you wouldn't be able to go from where I was in my last video to here without using like an orbital sander because you would have to take all that tooling out so by squaring up the stock with a hand plane you're taking all those tool marks out so you're increasing your accuracy of your layout and the precision it that's built into the body of the plane by using the straight edges and all the things that I described but you're adding you are giving yourself one other additional advantage and that's that you could create a sanding block and just take off everything and sand all this with a sanding block because you have no saw marks in it or chatter from your planers and all that other good stuff and um, as far as the bottom is concerned this has to be planed this has to be set with a straight edge and it has to be planed this has to be absolutely straight so there's no other way you can get that without doing it by hand and I will say this is this is wicked straight through here I spent a lot of time on this so that's what you want because this is going to be a user and uh, so that's all I wanted to say about that so uh, let's get into uh, taking this for a test drive All right, let's take this bad boy around the block. Okay, so first thing I notice, it's cutting very smoothly. Uh, I'm able to set it to a shallow cut so I can push it efficiently we got good production of shavings none of them are binding so that's what the bottom looks like so that's real that's all freed up so uh, got good geometry on everything as far as the throat the blade there's no chatter chatter free cut so I think this the testing is a success get some nice full width full length shavings 
so that's what you want and they're practically transparent so that's a real good it's a real good cut real nice fine cut so there you go so to summarize this project uh, I want to say a few words the first is that I think in terms of the learning curve this is a beginner plane believe it or not it's a lot of work but the geometry is very simple so if you were gonna this would be a really good first plane for somebody to make or something sh something shorter but the general configuration is very very simple so in terms of the information you have on my channel to be able to make something like this you've seen me make the floats which you would need to do this work you've seen me do the work on how to to how to actually fabricate it. You've seen me lay out and fabricate the tote. You've seen me do the blades, the, the hardening, the cutting, the shaping, and all that mumbo jumbo. You've listened to me go through all the elements of the different parts, the disciplines involved in fabricating the blank, drying the wood. So within the body of my channel, you have nearly every element that you need to produce a plane like this. I will state the obvious though <laughs> and that's that you have to take advantage of the videos by watching them because it does you no good if you're in the business of learning how to make planes but you want to take a lot of shortcuts or you're watching other videos that don't give you that kind of quality information and the inspiration and the confidence because that's really what this is all about you see behind me I have this is my kitchen so my work area is my kitchen and if you have a house with a shop or a basement or a garage and you have better facilities than me then these are going to be even easier projects for you to handle okay that's how easy I think these things are and that's how much information I think you have on my channel that you can take advantage of and produce these kinds of planes. Once you do that, the sky's the limit because now you can make other planes, you can use this for your woodworking and furniture projects. These are great just to, as a conversation piece. This in and of itself, even if you weren't a real traditional woodworker like me, this is a great project to just blast out and challenge yourself to exercise the limits of your creativity to go outside the normal boundaries of what you're doing every day and produce something that's going to elevate your consciousness because that's really what creativity is all about and it makes life worth living for me anyway so I want to thank you for watching all those videos for listening to me gag for hours and hours on end as I go through live streams and videos and everything it means a lot to me Thank you very much. Stay strong, everybody.